Onboarding. This is a simple concept. It's a welcome message or a quick tutorial for new users to learn how to use your product. A lot of apps and games use it. So basically you open the app or the game and the first thing you see are a couple of slides or maybe something a bit more complex. And today you're going to see how you can create one. This UI makes that quite easy if you understand the, concept, the concepts behind it. So let's get started. All right, so I'm inside Unity and actually I don't think I should start here. First, I'm going to show you the basic concept and then I'm going to show you how to use it in Unity. So yeah, let's start with Illustrator. So let's create a canvas. Give me one second here. Let's make this dark so it's easier to see. All right, simulate. All right. And here I would like to have something a bit darker, something like that. Yeah, this should be fine. All right. So let's say we have a slide. Is this good? Yeah, it looks all right. Um, let's make it like that. So basically you open the app and you see your first slide. Uh, this is made in portrait mode. It really doesn't matter. The example that I'm going to show will be in portrait mode. So this will be easier to, to relate. So this will be our A, um, our A slide for our tutorial. All right, let's make this nicer. And there you go. So let's say we have three slides, right? So I have sl slide A, slide B and slide C. So this will be our B, this will be our C. Sorry, come on. All right. So how would this look? Well, basically you open your app or your game and you see the first slide, slide A. And then you would like to be able to go from A to B. All right. And let's make this a bit thicker. Let's add an arrow just so we can see what we're doing. And a bit longer, something like that. All right. Do we have an align here? Yeah, perfect. So from A, we go to B, from B, we go to C, and then we finally enter the, the app. So this can be a hi, welcome from choosing our product. You can look for different things and it will solve your X, Y, and Z problem. And then finally, okay, to get started plus X or whatever. So this is the, the main thing. Another, another option that you would, uh, you would see uh, would be to restart this uh, onboarding thing. So you might also have the, the option. Let's just copy here. So you might also like to, to allow the, your, your, um, your flow to go back from C to A. Of course, it doesn't have to be only three slides. You can have two, you can have a thousand slides. So basically, the flow would look something like, let's remove this, let's move here. So something like this would be a bit more easier to understand. So N, because we do not know the number of slides, right? So let's go like this, 100%. And let's also move it like so so basically this will be a proper way of showing a a flow like this one so you have your first slide you go to the second one and so on of course uh you would also like to allow you, you should also like uh, allow your user to go back so you should also have something like this and allow this type of uh allow this type of movement, so back and forth. And finally, when it's at the end, you should say, oh, okay, 
continue or go back. So let's go into Unity and see how we can achieve this particular behavior. It's very easy. It's one, one line, so the, the UI should be simple. And you will recognize this particular pattern in the graph, in the, in the flow graph. All right. So let's go into Unity and let's start work. First, I wanted to make sure that I'm clear enough in explaining the principle. So let's go to Doozy examples. We will be using this example free onboarding. And you will notice here that it says portrait. It was designed in portrait mode. Otherwise, <laughs> it will look like this. So game. And let's go with a portrait aspect. All right. I see we have, I'm using Unity 2021.2. Uh, so I didn't get to remove this to make it easier to see. All right. So what do we have here? Um, let's enter play mode and let's check it out. So let's maximize on play. Let's actually, let's start playing. We would like to see how this looks. So let's maximize. So basically this is a first screen. You'll notice some radio buttons here and it just shows where you are in the navigation. So we move forward. So this is B, C, D, and this is the, the final one. Of course, we, if we go forward, we should continue to, to the app, but since this is only the onboarding example, it will go back to the first one. So I can also use uh, keys. So right now I'm doing with the keyboard and I believe this should also work with uh, a controller. Let me open it and let's go back here. All right. So basically, yeah, check it out. I'm clicking this and it's moving. And I can also click the back button and go back. Yeah. So, and of course, touch my screen is uh, touch sensitive. So I can also use my uh, finger to, to use it. Let me just close the controller as we do not need it. All right. It's back. So let's also see the, the flow graph, the, the flow before we dive in to see how this particular setup was made. So let's exit maximize. I'm going to remain in play mode, but I'm going to select the flow, the flow controller and the graph double click. And now we should also be able to see what is happening here. Let's uh, anchor this down and all right. Let's go to the beginning. All right. So we have our first view. This is the signals view. And we have two options. We have the navigation next or the navigation right. This is a UI button. And it, as you can see here, you have two, ex two out, out, uh, outgoing options. You have the UI button next. So basically this button if we click it here, you will see the connection activate via this connection. It will light up. Check it out. I'm going to go back now. But if I use the keyboard, actually navigate right, you will see the other connection light up. So this one, because this, this um, works via signals. So there you go. So one is the click and the other is the key. It will work in either of these two ways. And of course, the navigate right is also the one connected to the to the controller, the controller, uh, the, the navigation system also sends uh, th this command. So that's why it works with basically any type of input that you might uh, might want to use. All right. So we're showing this, uh, this view just by entering this node. So this node becomes active and it will show the category, uh, any view that has the category view and the name main, and of course the navigation. And when we exit the node, so basically we go from this node to the other node, it will just hide the, the, main, uh, um, the main view. And 
it will go to the one that is called signal. So let's do just that. I'm going to use the keyboard. Actually, I'm going to click because this needs to be enabled. And as you can see, they all change. You're also hearing the sound because we have here some uh, audio source that are listening for these signals. And of course, the back button. All right. What happens when you get to the, to the last slide? Well, as you can see, these connections, they go into this pivot mode. The pivot mode is just a way of making, uh, of, of making the connections a bit easier to see. We, we could, of course, make these connections from here directly here, but it would be harder to see. So now when we continue, if I click next, you will see that um, the connection will go through the pivot mode through the pivot node to the other pivot node and then come here. So check it out. There you go. Of course, now I cannot go back. So if I press escape, this doesn't work. Basically, it's a one way, a one way trip. You can you, you can go through the entire onboarding uh, session. So onboarding uh, slideshow, but you cannot go from the first one to the last one. So it's a one way you go, 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 go and then repeat. And of course you can go back and forth. How do, how do you go back? Well, there's a functionality in the graph called backflow. And this is enabled with this particular button. And this is how you spot it. This is the only one that has this particular color, this um, violet color. And you will notice that it goes back and it lights up the same connection that it came through. What I mean by that? Well, let, let's look here. If we go from this node to this node with this button, this connection will light up. And when we go back, the same connection will light, will, will light up, but with the uh, backflow color. If we use a uh, button, again, it, it goes through this flow, and when we go back, it remembers the connection. This is just a way to be able to visually identify which connections were used and when. So this is how this particular system works. Basically, the, first, uh, the, the, the start node activates this particular UI node that in turn will show you all the views that have the category view and main, and of course the navigation. The navigation is a separate view that is shown only once. And when exited the first node, it will hide the main view. And after that, I'm just gonna select them. Check it out, they, they're all the same. Even the exit conditions don't change. You only change what view you're showing. So you can imagine you can add as many things as you want. If you do not like this flow, of course you can write it in code, but it wouldn't be uh, a visual thing. It would be harder to debug. It would be harder to, for, for a designer to add or remove slides. So this should be a very convenient thing. Of course, since this is an example, I'm not using databases and I should be using them, but we wanted to, to give you um, the option of having everything empty. So basically all the databases aren't available. All right, so we go from A, B, C. This is the exact same thing. Actually, um, you might have seen this like so. Let's move it down and let's just rotate this to have a better view, something like that. All right. Oh, come on. All right, so what you're seeing here is basically what I've shown you here. So we go from A, B, and, and finally we go back. This is the flow. That's it. It's very simple to, to understand and to implement. So how was this particular example created? Because you may have noticed in the hierarchy that there are a lot of crazy things happening. Well, it has been deconstructed in, um, there are a lot of views that share the same view category and view name. And I'm going to show you. So this might look like a lot of things happening 
and let's check it out so what do we have here we have a background let's also look in the inspector so this is a simple image with a color that can be changed of course and if you change this because this is a shared thing this is the background for all our slides when we enter play mode you will notice that all the slides will have will have this uh, crazy color behind them uh, it, they, it will work but it's insane actually so let's undo this so we have a background this is the first thing and then we have what is called background accent and i'm gonna select all of them and these accents are basically these strange shapes they just add a bit of texture you can name them texture if you want background texture and you will notice let's select the first one so basically this one this is what we call an accent and this contains a top a bottom so basically just a two images nothing special and this has the ui view with the view uh, with the category called view and the name call, called main if you recall i told you that this particular node let me select it shows any views that have the category view and the name main well this particular view has that view and view name so basically each slide is made up of different views that are shown all together and hidden all together with with one command all right let's continue so this particular view has i see here that it has two fade animations I know that because I see for the show, I see this indicator lit up and I know that this color is for fade. So this will fade in in 0.3 seconds. And when it hides, it will uh, fade out in 0.3 seconds. All right. So, yeah. Let's go here. What do we have? We have a main element. The main elements are basically those icons uh, up there. And they're, they're just there to, to look nice. So let's select them. So these are the main elements. All right. What does it have? Well, of course, this is another UI view, but it has the same view, uh, view category and view name and a different animation. I can see here that we have a scale animation and here a scale and a fade animation. Let's enter play mode and let's check it out because I think it's easier for you to understand once you see it in action. So you just seen this. Let's look at the graph. So this main, uh, this main node it shows any views that have the view category view and the um, view name main. So what, what should it show? Well, it shows the accent. Let's, let's just hide it. It shows the element. It shows the title. And it shows the, the, the description. So basically, there are how many? Five views. Five? Four. Four views. All right. So basically you have four elements that are different views that have different types of animations. This was done in this particular way to create this effect. So it looks nice. Let's also go back. And it works. What else are we seeing? Well, if I look at this node, I will see that it also shows another view, another category, another view that has the category view and the name navigation. Which one is that? Well, let's look here. We have view navigation. Basically, it's this one. All right. So let's go back to game view and let's tell it to hide. Hide, show. So our uh, slides have a shared background that doesn't move. All the elements are animated with different animations and different times, but because they share the same view category and view name are animated all at once. 
And because the navigation has to be over all the others, it's just another view that it's sorted out like this. So this is how they work. And this is the, the final result. That should be quite elegant to, to use. What else do you have here? You may have noticed you're listening, you're hearing some sounds. Well, because we didn't use anything outside Unity, we just have two audio sources, one for the next, so basically going to the next slide and one for going back. And how, how do they work? Well, you have an audio source with a simple switch to, so this is the audio clip that you're hearing. And in order for this audio source to play, it has two listeners. It either listens for whenever a button that has the category navigation and the name next is clicked and it does play on the audio source. Oh, you cannot see that. Excuse me. I believe this is better. So whenever a button with the name, with the category navigation and the name next is clicked, this Unity event will get triggered and it will play the sound. Which button is that? Well, it's this arrow. So, and since we have a shared UI view, there's only one button. <laughs> So we can check it out here and we have the button next. So when we click this particular button, we will hear this sound over here. Yeah. All right. Now we also have whenever a signal listener is, uh, is sent. So when we go to, to the right, so basically the, the right arrow, or for a controller, we, we click right, right here. Like, like you've seen in the graph, and now I'm gonna zoom in. So either the navigation, uh, a button that has the category navigation and the name next will trigger this sound, or the other one that, this is a signal, so, or a signal. So there are two, two things that can trigger this particular sound. They do the same thing, but it's achieved via different methods. And for the back button, actually for the switch back, so this is a different sound, we all only listen for input back button. So whenever the back button is uh, clicked in, uh, in, the, in the new UI system, this is basically the cancel button, if you're curious. So this is uh, connected to the escape key or the B key on the controller, basically this one. Sorry, so this one, yeah. I think I touched the mic. Excuse me, one second. I hope this doesn't make you crazy. All right. By the way, these videos are one edit or live, so yeah, things happen. I was on this side. All right, let's continue. So basically, this is how how uh, how it works. It's not something complicated and you can also do it. And I think I should do it just to show you how this is done. I'm going to make A, B and C and show you how this works. One more thing. How does the navigation right work? Because the back button connects itself. Well, in the event system, we added this particular uh, this particular input to signal. This one is for the cancel action. This is the back button that is added automatically, but this one, it had to be added uh, manually because it's not something that works out of the box as it's mainly a fringe case. You might need it, you might not need it, but a back button will always be needed in a UI. So uh, yeah, let's clear all this. I'm going to leave the navigation because it might be useful. So I'm going to clear this. Actually, no, I'm going to clear everything just so I'm going to show you how to, how to do it. And all right. So this, you, 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 you can consider this to be an empty scene. So it has a main camera, a canvas and an event system that has an input to, to, to signal set and listen for the navigation. Actually, I'm going to remove this as well 
just to uh, let's create a new scene. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm, I'm just going to show that there's nothing that you can, you, you can start from scratch and create a onboarding scene. So let's create a uh, canvas, a your native Unity canvas. All right. This is set automatically to screen, screen space overlay. I prefer screen space camera. So I'm going to do just that. I'm going to bring the main camera here. All right. Then I would like to use a canvas scaler. So I'll say scale with screen size. And for this particular example, I would normally go to 1920 by uh, 1080. This would be my, my go to resolution and 0.5. But for this, I'm going to say 800 by 600. All right. And in the event system, we need to switch to the new event system. And if you remember, we wanted to have the navigation for the buttons and the controller. I'm not going to add it now, just, just so you see that it doesn't work to go forward, basically. But I'm going to show you how, uh, how it's done. Oh, this might be a Unity bug, I believe. Where is that? So weird. Yeah, strange. Anyway, so now we have this canvas, all right? So I'm going to create a, uh, a simple view. I'm going to use the UI menu just so I don't have to create so many views. And here I'm going to say, give me a, um, a container. I would like a UI view. All right. So we have our UI view here ready to go. I'm going to say a name and I'll say category, um, what was this? Onboarding. Actually, I'm going to show you how to use the database. This should be even easier. Let's add a new database, say onboarding. And let's say A. Let's add one more B and one more C. I'm just typing and then pressing enter. You can also click the plus button and it will work. Let's say D and yeah, I'm going to remove it because I want only three examples. So it's easy to understand. I'm going to close this. Let's go with onboarding and this will be a, um, by adding this to the database, you get two things. One, you have the dropdown lists that are available everywhere, uh, including in the notes you will see later. And you also have regenerate enums. I'm going to click it. And this basically creates a um, special file for you with enums of this database. So you can access this in code without having to remember the names and so on. So it's type safe. And it's also um, it also allows you to see where it was used. It's quite useful. That's why I recommend using the databases instead of just typing your names or whatever here. All right, so this is our uh, A. We have a background. Let's just make it a bit more colorful, just so we can uh, we can see it. Let's go with a greenish teal, something like that, and let's create. Uh, let's add some text. So text mesh pro. And what did we, what did we have here? Actually, let's go with a purple. We're going to enter A. So I'm going to recreate this particular uh, example. Once this reloads. All right. So let's go with a purple, something like that. Perfect. So here we have an A. Let's also make it a bit more efficient and remove Raycast target. Just in case, let's make it bigger. So 200 by 200. Let's center it, make it a bit bigger. And 160. And let's just add some transparency, 40%. Actually, this isn't 40%, 56 multiplied by 0.4. This is, should be 40%, but it is a bit strong. So, oh yeah, this is 40%. All right, so basically I'm just copying this. I just created the, the A, right? Now, do we have a show and hide animation? 
and I think we do, we should have a move animation that uh, works like that. All right, so let's hide and let's show. This is what happens in the scene, hide, show. That's it, it's very easy. All right, so now that I have this view, I'm gonna click this rename button that will help me manage my, um, manage my uh, views in the hierarchy, easier to see. So I'm gonna click it. And this is view onboarding A. This is just a way to help you organize your things. I, I uh, recommend you use it if you want to. There's also one button here that says auto sort. This helps you sort things out. This won't do anything because this is a clear hierarchy, but if let's say the UI animator were here and the canvas group were here, you just click auto sort and it will put them in a custom order. And I'm gonna click it, and there you go. It just it just uh, set set them to a uh, custom order. This is uh, this was done to make it easier for you to see all the components. Since the the new version is highly modular, this had to be done. All right, let's continue. So I have this uh, this view. I'm gonna duplicate it and move the second one here. Duplicate again. Move it here. So this will be my example B. And I also plan on changing the name here. Again, I'm gonna rename and we have B. Then we have C. And I think this is more than enough. And let's go with C. All right, so now we have three views, A, B, C, with different names in the same category. All right, and they're animated. I would also like to have on start behavior. So right now, if I enter play mode, I will see C because judging by the hierarchy here, this is the one that's on top of all the others. So let's enter play mode and see that that is true. And basically I would like to have the on start behavior hide. So as you can see, C, and if you look here, you can see B behind it because these views have a transparency just to help you identify what's happening. So I'm going to select them all and I'll say on start behavior instant hide. So now when we enter play mode, they will be hidden. So let's enter play mode and let's check it out. This really isn't that complicated. There you go. They're hidden. I'm going to also change the, the camera color because I really hate this uh, particular blue color so I say solid color and I'll go with um, let's go with an RGB and say 18 18 18 all right so this is a very dark color so let's enter play mode and I won't be seeing that awful blue color yeah and of course if I click show this will work for each one of these Let's show C. There you go. All right. So now that we have previews with animations, they're all hidden. I need a way to control them. I need a way to jump from one to the other. So I will need a next button, basically. All right. So I'm going to come here to A. I'm going to create one more view that will house the navigation. So Let's also create, let's create a view. Do I want, yeah. So UI menu, let's add another UI view. And this will be our navigation. Our navigation, I'm gonna put it down here. I say 200, all right. Let's also move A, B and C a bit out of the way. And this will be our navigation. Let's open the database and say onboarding navigation. I'm just going to call it like that. And let's add it. And now it let's say onboarding navigation. All right. So now I have this, but I don't want this to be shown from left to right. I want to appear from down. So I'm going to go to the UI container, UI animator, select the move and say just come from down from the bottom. And when you hide, 
don't hide to the right, but go down. So let's see what I did here. Let's enter play mode. This will be visible right now. It, it will be the only thing that is visible on the screen, this particular um, view. And this is it. So hide and show. This is what I did. Of course, when you show the A, this will be like that. Ah, that's it. All right. Again, I'm going to rename this uh, game object, this UI view. Once the script reloads. So let's go to the UI view. Let's rename it. Onboarding navigation right here. All right. So uh, where are we right now? We need a button. I need a uh, right arrow, maybe something like that. So I'm going to go to tools, UI menu. And I'm going to say here, right. Let's use which one? This one. Yeah, I like it. So now we have this button and I'm going to put it right here. And I'll say um, minus 48. All right. So now we have in the game view, we have this, this button to help us. And this will be our direction, right? It says right here because this is how it was uh, designed. So let's go and say, yeah, we can also create it. So direction, um, actually say onboarding. Mm, do I want to confuse you? No. Yeah, I'm going to say uh, direction. Next, right, let's, let's just go with it like that. All right, so let's create this. And now we have this and we will also, also have, um, actually I'm gonna call this instead of right, I'm gonna say next and previous, just so it's easier to understand. So I'm gonna say next, save and previous. And I'm going to add this, this as well. Of course, this will be next. And we need one more with the arrow pointing in the other direction. And that will be previous. So again, let's go to the UI menu. I'm going to say left for the direction. And I'm going to use this. All right. So again, let's put it here, 48. And this will be our previous. How do I know this works? Well, I can check out the signals and see what buttons are being pressed. And I'm going to do just that. And let's go to the signals console. Let's enter play mode. And let's see what we have here. All right. So whenever we're going to click, we have a problem here. Oh yeah. I forgot to say for this to get the current value. So it's a bit low. Yeah, now it's okay. So let's go to signals. And now when we click this button, you will see that we clicked the button with direction previous. Yeah. And when we click this one we will see here next there you go so basically i know what buttons are being pressed so what do we have now we have two buttons and we have previews there has to be a way to connect them and this is the um note the, the the note graph we'll do that for you so let's exit play mode and now we need here a flow controller. I'm just going to add it by hand. And I'm going to say here flow controller. Let's add here a uh, doozy UI node flow controller. And now we need to reference a graph, of course, that we should create. I'm just going to create one here. So create doozy flow graph. And this will be my. Um, test, uh, onboarding test, onboarding test. All right, let's double click and hey, no, this should open tools. Let's go to window. Where's the Nodi window? Oh, <laughs> it's anchored here. 
Yeah, I didn't see that. So what do I need now? I need the node window. I need the node inspector. So I'm going to close this. So again, double click. Yeah, it should open. Let's move it here and let's go to full screen. How are you seeing this? Is it okay for you? Yes. Perfect. All right. So here we have a start node, like any graph. It has to have a, uh, a root, an origin point. And now we need to add some UI nodes just to show and hide those views. So now we're doing the navigation logic, right? You can either right click and click create node. We can simply press the space key, the space bar. And here you have UI manager, UI node. I would say just spacebar, U, and click. And now I have a UI node. There you go. So this is my first node. I would like when the graph is activated to jump to this node. And I connect it like that, All right? And now I need to look at what's happening here. When I enter this node, I would like to show the A view. And when I exit it, I would like to hide it. All right. So I would like to show the view. If you remember, we have onboarding A. And when I exit, I would like to say onboarding A. So this is pretty much it. Now I'm going to leave the three second time delay to jump to the other one. And I'm going to say here in the name, I'm going to say slide A. Just like that. All right. All right. I'm going to create one more. And after three seconds, you can go to this will be slide B. All right. And again, I would like to see onboarding B. And when I exit this node, so when I go to another node than this one, I would like to hide the view. Which one? Well, the same one. So onboarding B. When I enter the node, I show it. When I exit the node, I hide it. That it's very easy. Let's add one more. Are you seeing this? Yes. Like I said, this video is not edited. This is all live. So you, I may make mistakes and I usually do, but please be gentle. All right. I'm moving as fast as possible, by the way, but being real time, you will see that this is how long it takes basically. So in here, I want to say slide C. All right. So now we're, when, uh, when we enter play mode, after we have a, con a, a, a flow controller that controls this graph, it will show, uh, sorry, it will show slide A, then after three seconds, slide B, and after three seconds, slide C, and it will stop there. So we would like to close the loop and go back to A. So it's an infinite loop, basically. And we can do that by connecting this right here. And pardon my French, this looks like shit. So I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to create a pivot node. So this is why these, <laughs> these nodes don't do anything. But their, their um, objective is to help you create visible connections. So I'm going to connect this here. And I'm going to connect another pivot node here. So let's go here from here, here, and something like that. Now let's just rotate it so it looks nice. And this one like so, all right. This rotation is done by here, by the way, so you can also do it like that. All right. So now you can see a flow, all right. It starts in A, goes to B, goes to C, and after that, it goes all around back to A. This is how the flow looks. It's easy to understand, easy to follow, and it's extendable. And let's see it in action because I didn't do anything. I didn't add the navigation on slide A, by the way. So I'm going to put Nodi here. I'm going to put the inspector here. Let's see them. And right now, it doesn't work because I didn't reference the graph in the flow controller. 
even though I just drew it here and added all the flows, functionalities and so on, it doesn't work. Check it out. No graph is referenced here, so we enter play mode and we will be seeing only the navigation, I believe. Yeah, that's it. Nothing works. <laughs> so what do you have to do to make it work? Well, just reference the graph. And now it will work. Uh, you should have this selected, the flow controller, to see it in action here in Node. So let's enter play mode. Whew, this is a lot. All right. There you go. Slide A. We wait for three seconds. Slide B. And now you have an infinite graph. You have your animations. You can even change the animations if you want to. So let's say I would like slide A to rotate from, I don't know, minus 180 degrees. I don't know. So you'll see that when slide A shows, it has an animation. There you go. I would like slide B to hide with, uh, to hide and go up. And check it out. Slide B will show and then it goes up. So you, you, you get the idea. You can change the, the animations to anything you would like. Of course, what I did just now won't get saved because we're in play mode, but you, you, you should definitely understand how this works. All right. Let's go back to, the, to, to Node again. I'm going to close this tab. We need this here. Oh, let's close this. So you can open it again. Perfect. Hmm. This might be a bug. All right. Let's just disconnect this and you should stop. Yep. All right. So let's go to slide E. Well, we don't really want a time delay. We want when we click the next button, then we should go to slide B. So we will change this outgoing um, connection to a UI button and we will specify what button should be pressed and I'm going to say direction next and I'm going to do the same here the same thing here so again direction next and the same thing here uh, UI button direction next all right so now that we did that we're going to enter play mode the first slide will be shown A because that was the first node, right? So there you go. You have A right here. If I click this button, that is the previous button, it won't do anything. But uh, come on, why did I close the graph? I really wanted to show you this. Let's go here. So when I'll click this, let's come here. It goes to B, all right? And again, it goes in a loop. There you go. That's how this works. So we're using a different type of uh, trigger. It's no longer time-based. Let's also add our navigation. So if you remember, I told you that here, we need to add an input to signal. When you enter play mode, back button is added automatically. Actually, I'm going to show the back button right now. So if we enter play mode, look at the event system. A new component will appear here. And this is the back, this is the, this, this is the back button system. If we look at signals, all right. If I come here and if I press escape, this back button input has been detected right so there you go there are two signals one from this and one from the back button system so this means that i can come here so if i i can move right now forward but i cannot move backwards and to, to enable the back button system you just click this and this and now moving forward if I press escape, it won't work. But if I move to the other one and now I press escape, check it out. 
I just move from B to A. So we just created this option to, to go back by pressing the escape. All right, so right now we just created uh, a way to, to move forward. Actually, so we're moving forward. And now we can also move backwards via this particular um, this particular option. All right. So let's move forward and back. Of course, if we if we get here because we didn't enable the back button here and we shouldn't, we can do it. Although, so now if we go forward and back, it also works like that. <laughs> uh, but I advise you if you do this, just enable. Uh, let's go here. I want to see the node inspector. Uh, clear the graph history. So let's move forward. One, two, three, and when this shouldn't shouldn't go back. Like I, I said, you can if you do not clear the graph history. Just so say one, two, three. And now it, it does allow you to go back. But it depends on how you want to, to structure your flow. All right. So uh, this will get saved, by the way, the, the back button functionality. Actually, I'm going to leave clear graph history. So now you've seen how this works. How about let's add the, the way to use a controller or to use the keyboard. So basically to use the navigation right. And we do that by coming here to the event system. And we go to doozy, UI, input, and we use input to signal. And here we tell this particular thing to input action name, navigation, na navigate actually. And it will listen for navigate and for um, up, down, left and right and we are interested in navigation right all right so let's add one more let's go to the node inspector i'm gonna move these like so all right and i'll say for the second um output connection i'm gonna say i'd like to listen for a signal and I will say navigate, right. And whenever navigate right gets sent, I would like to, to, to move the, to, to the next slide. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. Plus, again, I'm gonna say signal, navigate, right. But uh, how do I know that? How do I know? What exactly do I need to, to, to add here? Well, you can know too, if you open this, the streams database, import, export, you have a navigate database that hasn't been added. By the way, this was added in Doozy UI 4.0.1, not in the first release, but in the second. And you click here, import, and now I have the options. And check it out. Now I have a drop down list and this should have, this should have been updated as well. And for the third one, again, I'm going to add a plus and I'm going to say signal navigate right. And again, just continue forward. So now I have two things. I added to the graph a way to, to know when to go next and the event system has this input to signal, basically we're, we're capturing navigate. We're capturing this one here, the move, um, the move, um, I don't know how it's action from uh, this uh, UI system, UI input module, basically. This is from the new input system. So let's enter play mode. I hope you noticed I didn't write a single line of code. This is all done with clicks and uh, yeah, me, me talking. So right now, if I click the right button, basically this will work. And let's also see the flow. 
There you go. And let's get a controller. I'm gonna open it because it's in standby mode. All right. And let's go to, again, this is all live. All right. And check it out. I'm clicking this particular button and it works. Of course, we also have the back button functionality, the B. And why doesn't it work? Oh, <laughs> because I'm, I'm, I'm on A. So if I go to B and now I press B, it should go back. All right. So we're using the a pointer, the, the mouse. We're using uh, the keyboard. So if I click here, it works. We're using the keyboard and we're also using a controller. And I know that it also works with touch. So if I'm going to click it. Let me move the mouse from here and I'm going to click it with my, with my finger. And this works. I don't know if this is visible on camera, but I'm clicking with my, my finger. So all these input options work again, no code, no nothing. So basically this is, uh, of course, if you want the, the um, radio buttons, you need to set them up and listen for the, when the view is shown, uh, you can check out example free because this would be a very long video continuing from here. But I just wanted to show you that this isn't very hard to do. And depending on how you um, structure it, how you structure your UI, you can create, this was a basic thing that I did um, live for you. All right, so yeah, that's it for, for this video. I hope it was insightful. It's really, um, it's really not that hard to use this UI, but there are a lot of options and then sometimes it can be overwhelming, but once you understand how it works, uh, you will see that it's easier to work with. On another note, yeah, all right. Thank you very much for uh, watching this tutorial. I know it was a, a long one. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the, the next one. All right. Have a good day.